How you doing? Good to see you, Bev. <laughs> Good to see you too, Steve. Um, so what we're going to do today, uh, we've cornered Steve on the sofa. We're going to ask him some questions and just go with the flow. So welcome, Steve. Um, let's start officially. Who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name's Steve Mitchell. Uh, I live in Western Supermare and I'm a singer-songwriter in one, two, about four different musical acts. So, nice. Uh, yeah, so yeah. We're going to talk about them shortly. Absolutely. Before yeah. we get going, I want to ask you uh, about Western, your yeah. relationship. Uh, I was born here in 1975, <coughs> uh, 41 years ago. Uh, I've lived here all my life. I've lived uh, on most of the estates where I'm Western. Um, I've been to school here and the only time that I wasn't part of Western itself uh, was when I joined the army. I went away for six years. Uh, but Western's kind of like a magnet. It doesn't matter where you go or what you do, you will always end up back that's in Western. That's what they all say. And all the people that say, no, that's not true, they're all back in Western. And they are. But it's not are. such a bad place. So, yeah, so, yeah, born and bred, basically, yeah. We like the born and bred. Yeah. The state girl, born and bred. <laughs> Good girl. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk about your music. When did it start? Okay. Uh, let's talk about how you got into it. I think the first time I ever actually. I mean, I've always been into music, you know, growing up with my family. My mum used to be into, like, uh, Northern Soul and mod music and Motown, that kind of thing. And then my dad was into, like, the 70s music, David Bowie, mm -hmm. um, Eurythmics, all that kind of stuff. So I was always brought up around music. And then when I was getting, you know, to my, you know, early teens, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of... Um, you know, my cousins were into scooters and they were into the, you know, the mod revival scene. So I was always into music, but I never actually thought I would play music. Okay. Um, and then I was working with my mum at a, a factory called Isopad on the old mixing estate, actually. And, uh, and I met a guy called Cliff Moore. You who do? <laughs> lots, lots of people around Western Superman know Cliff Moore. Awesome guy. And, uh, and I just happened to mention that I wanted to, to learn to play the guitar. And he taught me how to play Sweet Child of Mine. No. Of all the things, like Guns N' Roses, um, he taught me how to play that. And that was it. I, I kind of just thought, I, I, I want to do this sort of thing. Uh, so, like I say, the love of music's always been there, but then actually playing it, it was really, really good. Okay. And then I joined the army. Oh, right. And everything stopped. The guitar went down, and I just never, ever did anything else with music again. Uh, until probably three or four years later, uh, I heard a friend, well, he wasn't really a friend at the time, I heard this guy playing a, a guitar somewhere in one of the accommodation blocks in the army. So I went up to see him and said, look, you know, can you give me a couple of guitar lessons? He said, yeah, you know, what do you want to learn? I said, well, I love the jam. I'd like to learn uh, That's Entertainment. He said, oh, I know that song. So he started playing it. Uh, so as he started playing it, I started singing it. And he stopped and he went, mate, I'm not going to swear, but uh, <laughs> never, mind si uh, never mind playing the guitar. You should be a singer. And that was uh, it. That's where my you know, singing kind of started from That's there. Cool. Yeah. That's so it was a nice little journey to get to there, but once it did, that was it. No looking back. So once you'd uh, realised you could sing, before I <laughs> so That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you picked up a guitar, started to play with yourselves. Yeah. Break the okay, sorry, buddy. Technical oh, difficulties here at Humans. Uh, well, <laughs> should we put it on that way? This, yeah, like. Yeah, you might want to rephrase that playing with myself there, Beth. When you picked up the guitar and started playing with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> anyway, you picked up guitar. I did, yeah. And started to play. Yeah, well, this is a thing. I, I kind of, again, I didn't. I stopped that because when he said you should be a singer, that was it. I kind of thought, well, actually, yeah, I love singing. Okay. So, yeah, I kind of stopped playing the guitar again then. And we formed a job, a band called The Job in the Army, and that, obviously I was the singer. And I think playing the guitar, it just came kind of by accident. It was. It was re it's really weird because I've never had a lesson and, and to be honest with you I don't actually see myself as a guitar player okay not in the sense of you know some of the musicians in Western are just absolutely phenomenal oh, um, yeah. and so from my point of view uh, yes I do play the guitar but I don't see myself as a guitar player I'm a singer who plays the guitar just enough to do what I need to do do you know what I mean yeah I didn't know um, that. so I mean you know like I say, I get away with it. I've been getting away with it for years. Um, but yeah, so it was kind of like, I just picked up the guitar um, through looking at tablature on the internet and, mm -hmm. you know, I'd look at a song and think, oh, I'd love to play that song. What are the chords to it? And then look up the chords on the internet and just do it that it's way, like, you know, that's it, yeah. So when did the formation, so you talked about the, the job in the yeah. army, the little band you had. So when did you progress after the army? I know you from the likelihood of moderations yeah. and moderations duo. Yeah. 
was it part of Edmund's life? I was, yeah. So when I left the army, I came back to Western in, I think it was about 1999, uh, and I met up with a really good uh, friend of mine, Geraint Evans, um, who we'd been to school together. And when I left Western, Geraint didn't even have a guitar. Um, when I came back to Weston, he was a godlike genius on the guitar. It was just like, what have you been doing? You know, he kind of locked himself away for six years and just became awesome at the guitar. <laughs> so I was like, awesome. okay. Uh, so that was it. We kind of, he was in another band at the time. I think they were called Mirage, mm -hmm. and I was, wasn't really doing anything. And I, you know, lots of people saying you guys should get together. So. We did. Uh, we got together and just chose a couple of songs like Oasis, The Jam, uh, The Rolling Stones, The Who, that sort of stuff. Same stuff I'm playing now, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's it, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was it. We, we formed a duo called Slider. I did. Uh, that was before Evan Fly, and we played around. We won a few band, uh, you know, uh, what are they called, like, you know, singer Battle songs, of Battle of the Bands sort of things, yeah. And then we had uh, John Hutchins came along and Andy Nancollis, and that was the four of us. Then we became Slider. And then uh, we met a guy called Dan Murphy. Dan Murphy then joined and we changed the name to Evan Fly. Uh, and that's when it started getting really interesting and we did lots of great stuff up and down the country. Uh, we eventually became managed by a guy called Joe Malik, who is uh, another well-known guy around Western. Um, and you know, Joe helped us to play T4 on the beach, okay. uh, which was great. We were the only unsigned band ever to play there. Uh, we would go up and down the country to places like Plymouth, and we played with Girls Allowed and uh, Daniel Beddingfield. And that is amazing. Like that. It, was, it was good times. It really was good times. Yeah. Um, and looking back on it now, you know, it's some great memories and some good experiences. Um, and then following from that, I, I kind of got to a point. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Something changed, but we, I just felt that we'd run its course. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, I just had a gut feeling we were never going to get to where I wanted to be with the band. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't see the point in. Um, this is going to sound really bad. A flogging a dead horse. It wasn't a dead horse. It was going okay, but it just wasn't what I, I needed. A new challenge, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was it. I just, I said, you know, I'm going to call it a day with Evan Fly and not really do any. I just took a back seat and just didn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and the guys carried on and became re-offender. They did. They came re-offender, yeah. yeah. And they've done brilliant. Oh, yeah, absolutely brilliant, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so that was good. And then I think it was probably about a year after, I was approached by a guy from Bristol. Um, I can't remember his name now. Pete Frampton, his name was. Uh, he approached me and said, look, you know, I've heard all the old Evan Fly stuff. Um, I know you're the singer and the songwriter, I'd like to give you a record deal. And I was like, okay, I was kind of a little bit, mm, I don't know, you know. Dubious? Yeah, um, but I, I, I didn't actually sign anything. It was quite good, because they invested like loads and loads of money, and I didn't actually sign anything. Oh, wow. Um, but what it was, they paid something like 15 grand for me to record this single. It was, I, it was about 15 grand to record this single. Uh, and it was a song that I'd written about my wife, about how every morning I wake up and I'm still falling in love with her. So it was called Still Falling. Uh, so they paid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they paid all this money to have this single recorded, but they changed the tempo, okay. uh, they changed the key, uh, they brought in other musicians, and they kind of made the song completely something that it, will, it never intended it to be. And that was my first little insight to the music industry in that sort of sense of like, you know, if if, if you're not going to play it how I want to play it, well then there's no point in me. It's not me, you yeah, know? Yeah, I understand. Um, and they released the single and I did some interviews and stuff and it was kind of like, do you know what, This I, I'm not enjoying this, this is not the song that I wrote. So that really put a sour taste in my mouth about the music industry and all that kind of stuff and I just went, do you know what? I've had enough of that. And then when it comes to recording the second single, I said, no, I'm not interested. So that was it. And I probably didn't play music again for about another year, just put the guitar it's down. That's it, yeah, <laughs> up and down, up and down. Such a prima donna. Um, and then it was Joe Malik and I were doing a radio show uh, called Sunday Music Live. And it was at that point I met a guy called Matthew Wilkins. Uh, he was playing in another band and I just sat there and I, the way he was playing the bass in this band, his head was going like that and he was really, really into it. Yeah. And I thought, I really like that kid, I like the way he plays. And then we were actually doing an interview, you know, afterwards so for, for the radio show. And I said to him, mate, I'm not going to lie, you're my new, you're my new, my favourite local musician, oh. just the, the, the way you play. And uh, 
And that was it. A couple of weeks later, I had a gig booked, and I said, mate, do you want to come and play the bass with, you know, this new sort of thing? And that was it. The Moderations duo then became me and Matt. Love, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we played your wedding, didn't we? Yeah. And I sang with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a great day. It was a great day. So, yeah, so me and Matt, I think we've been playing together now seven years. And then following on from that, we've actually got a guy called Dan Thompson who plays electric guitar. And we've got Rob Whelan, who is an awesome drummer as well. I mean, Dan's fantastic on the guitar. Uh, so, we've then got the Moderations full band. Mm -hmm. And that's it, that's that's the cover it. side of it. <laughs> and then of course I have the awesome, the biggest, the best, the ley lines. Let's talk about the ley lines. Let me have a cigar side yeah, of it. <laughs> yeah. Just take it through the Okay, man. No worries. Good for editing sweets, isn't it? <laughs> so let's talk about the ley lines. Okay, the ley lines. Uh, the Ley Lines, we're a five-piece band, obviously we're based in Western Supermare. We, uh, we've been together around about two years, just over two years now, I think. Um, and it, it all started, uh, Matt and I went down to uh, Sawmill Studio in Cornwall okay. with another great guy called Tony Hobden, who's at the college, said that they had some studio time, would we like to go and record some music? So we went down to Sawmill Studio and we recorded our first ever original song. And uh, it was it kind of different from everything I'd done before. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't mod. It wasn't indie. It was nothing like Heaven Fly. It was nothing like the Moderation. It was more kind of folky folk rock sort of thing. So we did it. We recorded it, and we really enjoyed it. It was a great experience. And then on the way back, I said to Matt, "Have you ever heard of the Levelers?" And he said, "But I know that we we play a song by the Levelers." He said, "But I, I've never heard them." So I played him an album called Leveling the Land, which is my all-time favourite album. So you know humans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I played in that, and then he went, mate, that was awesome. Play it again. Yeah. So we played it again, and I said to him, this is the, this is the kind of music that I've always meant to write, but because I've always been brought up around mod and indie sort of stuff, that's kind of what I've done. But you know, the Levelers, the Water Boys, the folk, uh, folk stroke rock sort of thing. That's what I've always meant to do. Uh, and that was it. On that journey home, we decided that that was the direction we were going to wow. go in. Uh, we were going to keep the moderation duo, but the ley lines was born on that journey. Uh, and then we enlisted the likes of Hannah Johns, who is absolutely amazing. She's um, beautiful. Violin, yeah, yeah, she's, she's got beautiful. such a great stage presence, and uh, she's cool as well, which is good. It's always, it's always good to have a cool girl in your band. <laughs> um, so yeah, Hannah came along, and uh, a guy called Pete Feely, who we've, again we've known for years, bass player. Uh, he's an awesome guy, brilliant on the bass, and you know, again, we're such a tight unit as friends as well, which is great. Um, we had a couple, of, we went through a couple of drummers, and uh, you know, I don't know why, but drummers are just they seem, <laughs> they seem to be hard to come by. Um, and then we've got a guy called Dave Burbage who plays the drums now, and he, he's really cool as well. And just with the ley lines, everything's just going really, really well. Um, we travel up and down the country. Uh, got a gig list. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Are you to bring out an album? We are. Uh, talking of the Levelers, we actually went to the Leveler studio, uh, their right. own studio, yeah. Incredible. Which for me, I mean, you know, come big, on, it's my favorite, big, one yeah. of my favourite bands. Uh, so we went down to Brighton for seven days uh, to record our debut album. It was like we only came back about two weeks ago, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and we enlisted a guy called uh, Sean Lakeman. Okay. who produced the album for us, awesome guy, uh, brilliant performer in his own right. Him and his wife have won the Radio 2 Folk Awards uh, at least once, I think twice. Uh, they've got albums out, that kind of thing. Incredible um, We were lucky that the, the Levelers actually came into the studio as well while we were there, oh, which was, was like, there. blew us away, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we recorded 12 songs and they're, all, they're being mixed and mastered now as we speak Beautiful. by a guy called Al Scott who actually produced Leveling the Land, the album no that I played to Matt on the uh, way. Yeah, so it's all come full it's circle, like, yeah. you know. So we're really, really excited, obviously, you know. Good. When's the album out? Uh, now, this is the thing. I've here got to be go. very careful here. Okay. Uh, we have decided that we wanted, to, um, we wanted to do two album launches, one in our hometown and then one somewhere else. Uh, we seem to have a really big following up north. When I say up north, I mean past Birmingham. <laughs> um, because we play lots of festivals, so we see lots of these people from all around the country, and then it's great, because they then go home and they tell friends and family and venues, and we go up and play in Barnsley, in Sheffield, in Manchester, and you know places like that. So 
we've decided on the 22nd of April mm -hmm. 2016, just in case this goes on forever, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're playing at the Imperial, right wow. in the corner from here. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're doing an album launch there, um, and then on the 23rd, which actually is St. George's Day, 23rd of April, we're playing at a place called the Tower Brewery. We're actually putting on a it's up in a brewery. Yes, you are. <laughs> and we're really looking forward to that. Uh, so yeah, so and the tickets are going really well. Now the official date was going to be the 25th, so those are the the, the launch parties, mm -hmm. and then we were going to release the album on the 25th. However, However. we're now in talks with uh, a PR company who are, they like what they've heard and, and they kind of now want to get involved, uh, but they want to do at least a 10 week campaign of sending the album to magazines, to radio stations, wow. to all, all different media outlets to build up a lot of... And you're good with that? Oh yeah, That's yeah. That you want. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, we're still going to do the launch parties, obviously for our friends and our family, and mm -hmm. we don't really call our fans fans, because it's like they're, they're friends, they become friends. Yeah. We're very, very personal with, you know, we'll always stick around after the gig and speak to them and before we go on stage, rather than being backstage, we'd rather be out with them, jumping around, watching the support bands and that. that. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, our family and our friends, we're going to do the two there and then we're just going to see what happens, I think. Um, we might have a national launch, we don't know. But Who knows? It's all exciting stuff. It is, we are really enough. excited for you. Okay, so let's talk about your up and coming events. Okay, let me just get my gig list. <laughs> <laughs> well, with regards to Steve Mitchell playing on my own solo and the moderation, you can, you know, we're around all the time, sort of thing. Um, but with regards to the ley lines, um, like I said, we've, I mean, the, the gig, I have to put it here, by the way, because, yeah, you know, uh, there it is, lots of them. Uh, I think that's the most important one. I'll just put that one there so yeah. Alex can focus in on that one. Yeah, that's uh, but uh, we're in, we're, actually, we're in Burnham on Sea. Uh, March the 19th at the Old Beer Tavern. Then we're at the Princess Theatre in Burnham Monsey. That's going to be a good one. We're headlining a, an all-day festival there. Nice. Uh, and then we've got the album launch weekend, just here. Uh, and then I think the biggest one for us so far this year is July the 9th is Hazy Days Festival. Huge in Western. It's going to be Huge. absolutely massive. Uh, Mark Whitehouse, oh, sorry. <laughs> Mark Whitehouse and James Willis Bowden, they've, they've done absolutely fantastic. They're, you know, it's going to be a massive event. They're using the old uh, Tropicana they site are. as well. That's, that's new news as well. That's, it that's is. That's I think they broke week. this news this week, yeah. yeah. So that's fantastic. Yeah, we're looking no, forward to that. I think all the Westerns Thank you. And then, of course, on the 26th of November, we're playing here at the New Market. So, uh, um, but people can find out where we're playing you can go to our website at uh, www.theleylinesmusic.co.uk you can follow us on Facebook you can follow us on Twitter you can follow us on Bandcamp you can go to our SoundCloud page you can the there's guys, loads of it <laughs> and well if you if you actually type in the Ley Lines band I think we're the top 10 or 15 on Google so I mean, you know that's, that's good enough right? it's yeah <laughs> we've got a good team we've got a good team good. so yeah I'm really pleased so uh, we're gonna start wrapping it you up now no worries just about. ask you uh, any words that you want to share about your work with the humans of West in some kind of final words do you know what? I just I think it's fantastic what you're doing. I, you know, there's two. Well, look, sorry. <laughs> uh, I think it's fantastic what you're doing. There's so many negative things that come out in local press and local media and stuff about Western. Do you know what? Western is a beautiful people, and it is full of beautiful humans. Uh, you're always. It doesn't matter where you go, what you do. You're always going to get the bad. But people sometimes miss the good, and it's right in front of their eyes. And it's things like this will, you know, help people realise that we have got some lovely people here, and we all want the same thing. And you know, just keep doing what you're doing because it's great. And I just want to say as well, from my point of view, you know, obviously I'm here with you talking about my past, my music, and stuff like that. Without the people of Western, you know, in my hometown, I wouldn't be doing half of the things I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, they've supported me endlessly. You know, mm -hmm. friends, family fans, friends of fans, friends of family, they just, you know, it's fantastic, all the venues have supported me, you know, and at the end of the day, I like to think I'm, I'm alright at what I do, but the venues have supported me and, you know, looked after me, and I've been doing it for a long time, and I like to continue doing it, so keep booking me. <laughs> we'll keep doing that. Thank you. So thank you very much, Steve, it's been it's a been pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, humans. Uh, I think that's it for now, like Steve said, check out his page, uh, check out Anything you can to do the ley lines online and don't forget to check out the uh, YouTube channel, Humans of Western TV. Stay in touch. That's how for now. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> so good. Thank you. No worries. Thank you, love.